everyone, I am Allie Boo. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be reading the sixth chapter of the first book of the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. So I just want to say I am very sorry if I mispronounce anything. Please let me know in the comments if I do and I will try to change it. Um, and as always, I will have the link to our website where you can find all of our podcasts in the description. And let's get started. Chapter 6. That night, Sophie dreamed the Keeper Elves were holding her hostage until she perfected all their cookie recipes. Then she told them that she liked Oreos better, and they tried to drown her in the giant vat of fudge. She woke in a cold sweat and decided sleep was overrated. When morning came, she took a quick shower and threw on her best jeans and a shirt she'd never worn. Buttery yellow with brown stripes. It was the only item in her closet that wasn't gray, and she'd always been so too self-conscious to wear it. But the color brought out the golden flecks in her eyes, and today she would be seeing fits again. And as much as she hated to admit it, she wanted to look good. She even clipped part of her hair back and toyed with the idea of lip gloss, but that was going too far. Then she snuck downstairs to check outside for him. She crept into the front front yard, blinking to keep the falling ash out of her eyes. But the smoke was so thick it stuck to her skin. Seriously, when were they going to get these fires contains? contained? Looking for someone? The next door neighbor asked from his perch on the middle of the lawn. Mr. Forkle could always be found there, rearranging hundreds of garden gnomes into, a, into elaborate tableau. No, she hated how nosy he was. I was checking to see if the smoke's any better. I guess it's not. She coughed for added effect. His beady blue eyes bored into hers, and she could tell from his thoughts that he didn't believe her. You kids, he grumbled. Always up to something. Mr. Forkle loved to start sentences with the words, you kids. He was old and smelled like feet and was always coming, planning about something. But he was the one who called 911 when she fell and hit her head, so she was obligated to be nice. He moved a gnome a fraction of an inch to the left. You should get back inside before the smoke gives you another one of those headaches you're always- Loud yapping interrupted him, and a ball of fur with legs streaked up the sidewalk, barking its tiny head off. A blonde guy in spandex jogging shorts chased after it. Do you mind grabbing her? He called to Sophie as the dog raced across her lawn. I'll try. The dog was quick, but Sophie managed to step on the leash with a clumsy lunge. She kneeled down, stroking the wild-eyed, panting creature to calm her down. Thank you so much, the guy said as he ran up the path. As he drew close, the dog started. The dog growled and strained against the leash, barking like mad. She's my sister's dog, he shouted over the noise. She hates me, not my sister, the dog, he added. He held out his hand, displaying several half-moon bites, fresh and still bleeding. One was so deep it would definitely leave a scar. Sophie picked up the, the trembling dog and hugged her. Why was the dog so afraid? Don't suppose you'd be willing to carry her back to my sister's house. It's just a few blocks away, and she seems to like you better than me. He winked one of his piercing blue eyes. She most certainly will not, Mr. Forkle yelled before she could open her mouth to answer. Sophie, go inside. And you, he pointed to the jogger. Get out of here right now, or I'm calling the police. The guy's eyes narrowed. I wasn't asking you. I don't care, Mr. Forkel interrupted. Get away from her now. The biting grew louder as the guy moved towards Sophie. She could barely think through the chaos, but there was something in his expression that made her wonder if he was planning to grab her and drag her away. That's when it hit her. She couldn't hear his thoughts. Even with the barking, she should have heard something. Would Fitz have sent someone in his place? But if he had, why wouldn't the joggers say that? Why try to trick her? Before she could react, Mr. Forkle stepped between them, stopping the jogger in his tracks. Mr. Forkle might be on the old side, but he was a large man, and when he straightened up to his full height, he made quite an intimidating figure. They stared at each, they stared each other down for a few seconds, then the dog jogger shook his head and backed off. Sophie, let the dog go, Mr. Forkle ordered. She did as he said, and the dog raced away. 
The jogger glowered at both of them before he took off after it. Sophie released the breath she had been holding. You're okay, Mr. Fuggle promised. If I see him again, I'll call the police. She nodded, trying to find her voice. Uh, thanks. Mr. Forkle snorted, shaking his head and grumbling something that started with you kids as he returned to his lawn gnomes better inside. Right, she agreed, moving up the path on shaky legs. As soon as the front door clo- closed, she leaned against it, trying to make sense of the scattered questions racing through her brain. Why would that guy try to grab her? Could he be another elf? Fritz had some serious explaining to do whenever he decided to make his next appearance. There was still no sign of Fitz when she got to school, and now she wasn't sure what to do. He might be waiting for her to be alone when he appeared, but after the dog incident, she wanted a few eyewitnesses around. Unless Fitz had sent the jogger to get her, it was all so frustrating and confusing. She headed for class when the bell rang, lurking a few steps behind the other students. A hand grabbed her arm and pulled her into the shadows between the buildings. Sophie stopped her scream just in time when she recognized Fitz. Where have you been? she demanded, a little too loudly. Several heads turned their way. Do you have any idea what I've been going through? Miss me bad, huh? He whispered, flashing a cocky smile. She felt her she felt the blood rush to her face and looked away to hide her blush. More like you left me alone with a ton of unanswered questions and no way to find you, and then this guy shows up and tries to grab me and... Whoa, wait, what guy? I don't know, she said. Some creepy blonde guy tried to trick me into wandering off with him, and when I wouldn't, it looked like he was going to try and snatch me, but I wasn't sure because I couldn't hear his thoughts, and I think he might be another elf. Okay, slow down. Fitz swept his hair back. No one else knows you're here. Only my dad. And he sent me to get you. Then why couldn't I hear his thoughts? I don't know, he admitted. Are you sure you couldn't? She replayed the scene, trying to remember. There had been a lot of barking and growling, her heart pounding in her ears. She couldn't even remember hearing Mr. Forkle's thoughts, now that she thought about it, and she could always hear his. Maybe not, she said quietly. My guess is that he was human, and maybe his mind is just quieter than the others. But we'll check with my dad. You'd better move, though. He pointed to a teacher who was eyeing them like she suspected impending mischief. You can't leap without people around. With people around, leap! She squeaked as he pulled her behind the English building. I can't ditch class, Fitz. He'll call my parents, and after yesterday, I think my mom might strangle me. This is important, Sophie. You have to come with me. Why? Just trust me. She locked her knees so he couldn't pull her any farther. She couldn't keep disappearing all the time. Elf or not, she had a life here, with classes she could fail and parents who could ground her. How am I supposed to trust you when you won't even tell me anything? You can trust me because I'm here to help you. That wasn't good enough. If he wouldn't tell her what was going on, she knew how to find out. It was strange to willingly use her telepathy after so many years trying to block it. But it was the only way to find out what he was hiding. So she closed her eyes and reached for his thoughts the way she had the day before. The breeze brushed through her mind, whispering scattered pieces of information. Nothing she needed, though. But when she pushed a little further, she found what he was hiding. A test! She shrieked. What am I being tested for? He read my mind? He dragged her deeper into the shadows, shaking his head hard. You can't do that, Sophie. You can't listen to someone's thoughts any time you want to know something. There are rules. You've tried to read my mind without my permission. That's different. I'm on assignment. What's that supposed to mean? Fitz ran his hands through his hair, which he seemed to do when he was frustrated. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you could get in big trouble for invading someone's mind like that. It's a serious offense. The way he said serious made everything inside her scrunch and twist together. Really? She asked quietly. Yeah, so don't do it again. She started to nod, but a small movement in the nearby oak tree caught her attention and she froze, her heart hammering so hard it drowned out everything else. It was only for a second, 
but she could have sworn that she saw the jogger's face. He's here, she whispered. The guy who tried to grab me. Where? It scanned the campus. She gestured towards the tree, but no, there was no one around. No thoughts nearby either. Did she imagine it? Fitz pulled the, the silver pathfinder from his pocket and adjusted the crystal. I don't see anyone, but let's get out of here. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting anyways. Who's everyone? My parents and a committee of counselors. It's part of the test you heard me thinking about when you broke into my head. He shot her a sidelong glance, and she felt her cheeks heat up. Sorry, she mumbled. She had never thought of telepathy as breaking in before, but she could see his point. His thoughts hadn't automatically filled her mind the way they did with humans. She'd shoved her way in and took them. She'd be furious. She'd be furious if someone didn't did that to her. She wouldn't make the mis that mistake again. It wasn't like she'd ever enjoyed being a telepath anyway. Reading minds always caused more problems than it solved. Fitz took her hand and and led her to the sunlight. Ready? He asked as he held up the pathfinder. She nodded, hoping he couldn't feel the way her arm was shaking. Can you tell me what this test determines? He grinned as his eyes locked with hers. Your future. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today we had a slightly longer chapter, so the episode is slightly longer. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And be on the lookout for our next video. And don't forget to check out our other podcast series if when we do more on our website, which I will have linked in the description. So I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching. And bye. See you in the next video.